This is the modern day saxophone, and it's commonly used in concert and jazz band setups. The earliest concepts of the saxophone were drawn up and created by Adolf Sax back in the 1840s. It was made in an effort to improve and best the sounds of the bass clarinet. The body of the saxophone is made up of metal, which is typically brass. However, the saxophone is a woven instrument because it requires a reed and mouthpiece to produce its signature sound. How exactly does it make this sound though? I'm going to answer that with the physics behind it, so join me as we find out exactly how a saxophone makes its sound. The saxophone is essentially broken down into two parts, the mouthpiece and the body. The mouthpiece is what produces the sound, and the body has the keys essential for an easy change of notes and pitch. The mouthpiece contains itself a reed and a ligature, and when put together correctly and blown into the mouthpiece, the pressure from your air vibrates the reed, sending a sound wave, a type of pressure wave, out of the mouthpiece, like so. The shape of the body of a saxophone is conical, which is going to be important for later. Pressing and releasing combinations of keys alters the pitch, and when pressing down more keys, this lowers the pitch, lengthening the wavelength. And when you release more keys, or press the left side keys of the saxophone, it raises the pitch, which shortens the wavelength. As previously stated, the saxophone has a conical body, which complicates its harmonics for a standing wave quite a bit. To understand what the fundamental frequency is for a closed saxophone, we need to dive into the math for the pressure wave of open and conical tubes. For a flute, which is a type of open tube, its wave equation for pressure can easily be calculated by multiplying its initial pressure by sine of kr. k equals 2 pi lambda, r is a point in space, lambda equals 2 times the length over n, and n is an integer for its harmonic number. Notice when looking at the graph for the initial pressure times sine of kr, there are nodes of the points in space where the pressure in the tube is equivalent to the atmospheric pressure. The lowest fundamental frequency for a conical tube, the same length as an open tube, is actually going to be the same, meaning the nodes for both their equations are also the same, except at the closed end of a conical tube, which there is actually a moment of maximum pressure, which we'll get to in a second. From this, we can conclude sine of kr has to be used in the equation. But for a conical body, the pressure must be treated as if it's for the acoustics of a sphere, because looking back at the geometry of cones, they are parts of spheres. Saxophones have a closed end that leads to an open end. So therefore, the pressure should be a maximum at the closed end and atmospheric at the open end. Math-wise, there is a factor that affects the pressure in such a way to get a maximum at the initial value. Multiplying the equation by 1 over r makes sure that the initial pressure is a maximum. This makes the function appear as p of r equals p initial times sine of kr all over r times n. The n in the denominator is added to keep a constant value of pressure for the pressure wave when r equals 0. You can check out the Desmos activity I made by clicking the link in the description to get a better understanding of this function. If you are an inclined mathematician, you can see that there is a skeleton function inside of what we derived, and it's actually from the spherical Bessel function of the first kind. I'm not going to go into too much detail about this function because it's taught in a more advanced calculus class than the one I'm actually in right now, and it's beyond my level of understanding for the moment. Don't think I forgot about the fundamental frequency of the lowest note on the soprano sax. Measuring the length of a soprano saxophone, it turned out to be around 27.5 inches, or approximately 0.6985 meters. If I plug in that length to find the frequency of the lowest note using frequency equals n times v over 2l, when velocity v is 343.7 meters per second at 20 degrees celsius, the calculated frequency is 246.03 hertz. So let's listen to this frequency first, and then the lowest note on a soprano sax. Notice how they are different pitches. The lowest note on the soprano sax is actually lower than the calculated frequency. What happened? And why is the note not the same frequency? There's actually more volume in the mouthpiece of the saxophone than there is at the tip of a cone. The extra volume in the mouthpiece lowers the expected frequency of a note, therefore the length of the saxophone must be measured and approximated from the bell to a point past the mouthpiece. If you check my Desmos workspace, I approximated the length to be 0.8275 meters, as it was the closest to the fundamental frequency of a soprano sax. Finding the frequency at this length, you get 207.67 hertz. So let's hear the tone produced from this frequency alongside the soprano's lowest note. And 
and it's a match. Thank you for watching all the way through the video. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, and if you have any questions or comments about anything in the video, leave a comment or two and I'll try my best to get back to you. I'd like to give special thanks to Joe Wolf of the University of New South Wales, Guy Moore of McGill University, my physics teacher Mr. H, and a very kind and helpful electrical engineering major at Purdue for helping me research and understand conical harmonics. My sources will be linked in the description below. Thank you for checking it.